possibility of news line from here. And as the saying goes, there is ability in every disability. Now, the saying resonates with our first report, the survival story of this young man, whom we hear has been confined to the wheelchair for the past 20 years, perhaps reflects the true definition of ability in disability. But regardless of the circumstances, he was not despaired. Rather, it was his springboard to achieving an extraordinary feat. Abdullah Ibn Kudu tells us the unusual story of Adamo Shuaibu in Tutsi, Chikawa State. Before that fateful Friday of July 2002, Adamo Shuaibu was physically fit, standing firm on his feet. Then what happened? Just a month before going to my NYSC, when Friday morning on the 12th of July 2002, I woke up in the morning in my house, I took my bath, I dress up, go for work as a teacher then. Just for me to start feeling a general body weakness and like a fever. But I say, no, I don't want to lie down. Let me just go out for the work. So as I just came out of my room, I was, I stepped down from the corridor, just getting to the gate of my house to open the gate. I just stopped instantly in one place. I discovered that I cannot move again. I was telling my wives, ah, see, I cannot move. They were surprised. Then gently I just went back to the room and lie down on my bed. After like 20, 30 minutes, when I called my, my friend who is a medical officer, I realized that I cannot stand, I cannot walk. That is the story of 52 years old Adamu, a graduate of agricultural science from Abubakar Tafara Baleo University, Bauchi, who has in the past 20 years accepted his faith in good faith. This is after consulting the best of medical personnel, both at home and abroad, among whom are more than 150 herbalists. I was eating, I was sleeping, only that I cannot stand. All these my legs have never pained me, and my sensation was, up to now is intact. Only that the motor cannot work, but the sensation is intact, but I can eat. I was indoor for a good two years. For that two years, if you see me outside of my house, we are just going to either hospital or traditional house or prayers or to have you. Under this condition, Adamu Shaibu moved on in life. He continued with his teaching profession, a job he keeps until when he was elected as a member of Jigawa State House of Assembly in 2011 as an encouragement to persons with special needs. I was uh, very uh, surprised when I saw the wheelchair. It was in my room for a good two days. I'm not even touching it. But later on, I started using it. Let me know that it's going to be my leg for the, uh, the maybe present future uh, situation. What motivated you to move on after you have tried all the medical uh, checkups? Because what I said is that whatever God has ordained, when it happens, you just accept it. As a Muslim, you have to accept it with a, a very good faith. So that I accepted it. With one heart, and I know God knows about it, and God knows better, and God knows the reason why. And later on, I have re started realizing the reason why maybe God has tested me or tried me with that. Because a month to go for my service, as you can see, I graduated without this problem, but I had to do my service on a wheelchair. The story of Adamu Shaibu is a moral booster to all. I was the only teacher taking SS1 to SS3 in that school, Agricultural Science. I was having about 24 periods then. So when I was in the staff room, the morning time, his assistant would come and push me to the class. I would go there, I would give them notes, they would write before me, I would correct whatever corrections. Then I would explain to them, then come back next period. That's how it's going to be. The father of 20 children with two wives, Adamu is also a talent in his poetic work. <laughs> So this is just like uh, calling the attention of the husband and wife to live peacefully. Incredible story there, and of course, a positive way to start news line tonight. Now, our intention with this story is simply to uh, inspire a tiny spark uh, of possibilities within you. Now, our next story is very pathetic. It's a story of a woman in her 40s by name Hawa. 
She was rescued after spending eight years in solitary confinement, we hear, meted out on her by her biological mother. And this happened around Saminaka community in Kaduna State. Now, if you're wondering what may have gone terribly wrong here, we have Haruna Mohammed to tell us all about it. She is spiritually possessed and to many cultural beliefs this is an aberration and burden. Most victims risk being condemned to inhuman treatment and isolation. This is what Hawanuhu suffered for eight years under the watch of her family members. They appear to be the triumph of evil as neighbors in the area appear helpless and unwilling to talk about it for many years. Actually what disturbs us um, and for me in particular is neighbors are aware that such thing is happening but they are also afraid to report which is actually not acceptable as well. Lack of care and associated psychological trauma and deprivation worsened Hawa's situation. At first, she was taken to General Hospital in our area. And later, we took her to traditional healers. And since then, no improvement. However, officials of Kaduna State Government and Command of Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps acting on credible intelligence stormed Ngwamba community close to Samanaka and rescued the victim. They were doing the traditional medicine and uh, her condition never improved. So I believe that um, if you're truly a mother, you know, for you to subject your own child, and we also learned that she has five children. I think it is really actually very wrong. And this is something that Kaduna State Government will never accept. Hawanu is receiving medical attention at Barna Psychiatric Hospital, Kaduna. And what may follow will be the focus for subsequent reports. Mm. Very interesting. Now, for those who enjoy the support of their parents, um, some of us do take those uh, nurture and you know privilege for granted, but there are many others who do not in enjoy such uh, support from parents. And our next story uh, is a, a good example of uh, um, you know children who have not really um, enjoyed such privileges. Little three-year-old Ado, um, of course. Uh, does not um, or have not enjoyed the privilege of having both uh, his parents uh, to himself as he lost both of them uh, in a motor accident we hear uh, along uh, Lambata Maji Road in Niger State. Uh, Jones Ajay will tell us all efforts uh, being made to locate members of his immediate family. The joy of every child is to grow up with the parents, enjoy the warmth and comfort of a home which comes with good parenting. However, the fate of little adult to enjoy such was dashed as he lost both parents in an accident on the 7th of January 2022. The boy was said to be traveling with his parents in a trailer from Dawaki Moto Park in Kano and were headed for Lagos before the accident occurred between Lombata and Maje in Niger State. While the father died on the spot, his mother was taken to the Family Medicine Practice Center, Gauba Bengida, an outpost of the Federal Medical Center, Bidda, where she gave up. Some survivors of the accident were said to have heard the mother calling the boy Ado in the course of the journey. At present, Ado lives with the staff of the center, Brenda Gula Demwa in Gauba Bengida from where he is taken to a crutch on a daily basis. The very day I took him home, you know, he was not like this. He was malnourished. So I just kept him. I said to I make food, I prepare some food and then um, I bath him. He was crying since he's not used to morning evening. So I just uh, Gave him, gave him food. Medical director of the Federal Medical Center, Bidda, Dr. Usman Abubakar, says all efforts to trace relatives of little Ado have not yielded any results. We are worried because I'm um, considering his age. 
this immediate environment has a lot of role to play, not just in this fiscal development, but as well as um, social, cognitive, and other requirements of every child. We need a system of other stakeholders to make sure that they are actually his first degree relations. The corpses of little adults' parents have been deposited at the general hospital New Wuse Mug for the last six months and nobody has come to claim them. The last two weeks we went to Sabo Wuse to check if the corpses are still there. We found out that the corpses are still there. The boy is still here and we are believing that with this effort of NTA we are going to trace the relatives so that they can come and claim the boy. The orphan is completely oblivious of his situation and what lies ahead of him. Whoever knows are those relatives or any information about where they may be found should contact the Federal Medical Center Bidda or any NTA station across the country. Mm. Poor thing there. And I'm sure that uh, nobody would want to take, uh, you know, the joy of having both parents at that standard age for granted. You really do not know what it means. It can only be imagined. We really appreciate those who are trying to locate his family. Now, what is breakfast without tea and bread? Or rather, what is tea without bread? Well, your guess is as good as mine. But it is estimated that over 10 million loaves of bread are consumed daily. And you know what? Consumers of bread are now in a dilemma with the cost of bread or ingredients of bread rising daily, especially flour, which have raised the cost of a loaf and it shrink its size. Now, in our next report, Musa Ali takes a look at the demand and supply of bread in Nigeria, the looming strike by master bakers nationwide. This is the popular and ever busy Kefi Abuja road. It is some minutes past seven in the morning, and people are out for work or are at their place of business. Some of them say having tea as part of their breakfast makes them smart. And refreshed. Well, I feel strong, feel healthy. That is why I like taking it every day. I do take it in the morning Thank you. before going to work. Yes, tea remains a preferable morning meal, not only for Nigerians, but millions of people across the globe. A research conducted by the Euro Monitor International indicates that about 3.7 billion cups of tea are consumed on a daily basis worldwide. For Nigerians, the combination of tea and bread is the standard breakfast meal. I like it creamy, yes, and um, soft, fresh, <laughs> yes. We eat bread and bread goes, mostly people eat it as their breakfast in the morning. Now, talking about bread. The demand for it in Nigeria has been on the increase. Investigation by NTA News shows that there are more than 2 million bakeries producing more than 10 million loaves daily across the length and breadth of the country. A mess bread has been produced. Alaji Isak is one of the major bread producers in Abuja. He told me that meeting the demand by Nigerians has become a source of concern for master bakers. Especially flour. Every day or every week, the price is going up. I want to give you an example. A week or so, 2,000 naira was added. And I was made to understand again that in the next two weeks, another 2,000 naira will be added to the cost of it. After my discussion with him, I visited this bakery located in Kuba in Abuja. I met Miss Peace Izedua, the operating manager of the bakery. She said the major challenge is the scarcity of flour and high cost of major ingredients. When the leather for packaging the bread, they have also increased costs. So virtually, to produce bread now is very expensive. Now we have salaries to pay. We have over 100 staff that will have to pay salaries. If we go on strike, how do we meet up with their salaries at the end of the month? Already, 
5,000 bakeries have shut down operation nationwide in protests over high cost of production. So for them too, they are because they want to sustain the business, they have to add to the price. So times I won't blame them because increase everywhere, everything maybe based on what they are buying. Right now, <laughs> the situation has made it so tight for if you are around a family of four or five, it is practically impossible for you to eat bread these days. Scarcity of wheat is said to be responsible for the high cost of flour in Nigeria. What happened? to the cassava flour initiative of the federal government. What about the 15% wheat levy for cassava flour projects? NTA is seeking answers. And more revelations will come your way. Well, what can I say? I can only advise. Man should not live by bread. All right, welcome back to Newsline on the network service. Now, many of us must have witnessed the launch of the NNPC Limited last week. It has all the trappings of a rebirth and one that marks a new beginning indeed for Nigeria's energy powerhouse. Now, for those who must have missed the grand ceremony, here is Lydia Sampson with details. <laughs> The message is clear that the NMPC Limited is now a limited liability energy company tasked with ensuring energy security for the nation and must not be compromised. Our country places high premium in creating the right atmosphere that supports investment and growth to boost our economy and continue to play an important role in sustaining global energy requirements. We are transforming our petroleum industry to strengthen its capacity and market relevance for the present and future global energy priorities. The key players acknowledge that the tax ahead may not be easy. However, deliberate efforts and policies are to be channeled towards achieving and showcasing the new NMPC Limited as Africa's largest oil company. We are setting all these woes behind us and a clear path for the survival and growth of our petroleum industry is now before us. With the PIA assuring international and local oil companies of adequate protection for their investments, the nation's petroleum industry is no longer rudderless. It is now a nimble company, a company that can act quickly, can borrow money quickly, can return people's money quickly, can also make decisions very, very quickly, and also in position to get the best of class of people that it can find anywhere in the world, inject it into the company and make sure that it works for everyone. And I'm sure that Nigerians will see a very, very different company in the coming days, in the coming months. For the galaxy of entertainment, it's simply about making a historic event, not just colorful and grand, but memorable for all. Now, the beautiful thing about love stories is when the parties involved decide to nurture it, and of course, to the level of forever together. The next story is the story of Adunola and Olani Waju Bambushi. They took their relationship to the next level with a vow to love each other forever. Diana Jali witnessed the solemnization ceremony and it took place in Lagos. <laughs> Walking down the aisle, looking gorgeous, accompanied by her father, Yemi Afolabi, the beautiful bride, Anne Adwala, is fully prepared to be called Mrs. Olariwaju Bangboshe. For Anne and Olariwaju, what started out as an acquaintance two years ago, metamorphosed into friendship, love, and today, marriage. Then came the much anticipated wedding rites when vows are exchanged. <laughs> Officiating priests advised the new couple to love and cherish each other while sustaining their marriage with prayers. We see the gisting partners 
and they should not take their issues out. Rather, together, go to God. The newlyweds also signed their marriage register as the elated congregation sang and danced. Soon after they were pronounced husband and wife, the wedding train and guests moved to the reception venue where parents of the newlywed made their way into the reception hall with energetic dance steps. <laughs> Here we have Anne Adwola and her heart Rob Olariwaju Bangboshe. Their confidence and happiness could tell that the future is bright. The joyful parents couldn't wish for anything less as they showered the couple with prayers and good wishes. They are starting their own journey. My prayer is that God will go with them and my advice is that it will uphold God. It is an indescribable joy that fills my heart seeing today coming to reality. This is they have been long waiting to see. And they must at all times know, realize, accept and practice that one plus one will remain one for the rest of their life. The prayers are that God will continue to be with her. God will guide her. The Holy Spirit will direct her steps. There are more good wishes from their guests. This marriage is expected to be for life. We pray no divorce, no death. I was inquisitive to ask what attracted the two doctors to each other. Very selfless person and it's really smart. Tender loving heart, uh, kindness and um, the gift of love itself. All the trappings that comes with a wedding ceremony we are on display as the couple cut the wedding cake and performed their first official assignment. And when it was time to dance, the couple did not disappoint their guests. Congratulations to the couple. And as they say, uh, a great marriage is not when perfect couples come together. But of course, when they're able to... Uh, leverage their differences and keep to their vows all right let's now move to lagos the center of excellence where excellence says the true identity of a nigerian and to further you know make it clear uh, is when the aggregate is zeroed in on the younger generation who from birth are always revered you know as bundles of joy to their parents and of course to the nation these accolades and national pride is contained in our next package, and it's by Anthony Forsen. 13 years old Mourinho Lua Adishina is an SS1 student. She may have been described as a bundle of bounders, gift, and grace. She is Nigeria's pride, sitting as Nigeria's youngest on air personality. Mourinho Lua is an author, illustrator, a programmer, a poet, serial social entrepreneur, and can you be this? A seasoned speaker having a chat with her was revealing. I've done a lot of stuff and received at least four awards. And the first award I won was the Kid Printer Ambassador Award, in which she was giving awards to children who were doing businesses. And the second award I won was the Junior Bank Awari Robot, um, Robotics Challenge, in which I came top five out of 5,000 children. And the third award I won was the Malaysia Robotics Challenge, in which me and my teammates, we had to code a robot to do something entertaining and we came second for Nigeria out of 24 countries. While the fourth award I won, that was last year, I won the um, Star Kids Spoken Word and Poet Award. But how did she start? I'll say um, what motivated me to come to is um, the help of my parents and God. My coding journey started when I was seven and I started learning scratch and now I'm updating to Python, Java, C++. I'm still uh, a beginner on Python. I haven't gone to the extreme yet but I'm still learning. Where is Mojirola's confidence and inspiration 
coming from? But I feel proud. I feel amazed at what I've done because um, adult, anytime I see adults and my parents tell them my story, they are amazed, they are proud, and they want their children to be like me and learn, have broad um, learning pace for them. So right now, um, you are already a role model at 13. Yes. If Mojoyola is good, here comes Mobolumi. At 8 years, he had become an author. Now at 11 and in JS2, he is called the Super Brain Boy. I had a problem with mathematics and uh, my dad gave me an affirmation called I have a super brain, I know mathematics, I know better than my teachers, I know better than my mates and I'll teach others. Yes. When I started reciting the affirmation every single day, I got better at mathematics. It also gave me the idea to create a spiral called Super Brain Boy. I drew well character, I wrote it on jotters. So my dad um, published the book and we have it right now. So I now start to do like different things on Super Brain Boy, like games, like the game I have right now. And I also want to do animations of it. Overcoming his phobia for mathematics, he is called the Super Brain Boy. Discovering these Nigeria's future tech giants was made possible with me accompany the Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohamed to Yungan Group. I to take a consult platform capital for bringing up these startups, encouraging this thinking with these young you know, entrepreneurs and these young uh, uh, technologies to really, uh, you know, make society a better place, grow our economy. And uh, from what I've seen today, I'm proud to be in Nigeria when I see these children winning awards all over the world, competing with other, uh, you know, uh, children from other developed countries. So we need to do what we can do, or all we can do in our own position to encourage this uh, campus. We have companies who have come here and have started hiring locally. Local talent, that's job creation. On this African work, we have companies and investors who have started investing in African and Nigerian businesses. So capital is from coming in, not to sell of oil, not to sell of, of, of gold, to our best result that the minister said is, the, is renewable, is renewable, is limitless, and it's creative. Unicorn today is watering seeds of innovation, showing that impossible is not Nigerian, no African. Wow! As Steve Zebrudaya will say, are you, are you seeing what I'm saying? Did you see how the honorable minister of information shifted in his chair? Let's say Nigeria does have them and in abundance. All right, let me take you now to Jamare town in Belcher State, which we hear recorded a historic influx of people simply to watch or witness the turbaning ceremony of the wife of late chief of staff to the president, uh, to President Muhammadu Buhari, uh, talking about Abba Kiari as first Gimbia of Jamare, Bilak Absa. Tells us more, and he says that the recognition is meant to appreciate her contributions in the development of that community. Jama Ari is one out of the six Emirates in Bauchi State and hometown of the wife of the late Chief of Staff of President Muhammad Buhari Abakari. The exalted position of the Gimbia is meant for royalty, also given on the basis of merits to people who have contributed to the growth of their land. Emir of Jama Ari, Ahmed Nuhuwabi, extolled the virtues of Hawa Abakari, thereby justifying the reason for conferring the position on her. He said the traditional role of the Gimbia is to act as a link between the women folk and men folk. The reasons for traveling was for certain benefits and other measures, which he excels in a particular field of endeavor. That is why, secondly, if he gives contribution to the development of memories, sadly, if he belongs to the 
Speaker after speaker, guest at the tabernacle ceremony, describe how Abba Kari as a woman who has lived for her people and virtually touched every facet of their life, ranging from health, education, and empowerment, among others. <laughs> Her children, Aisha and Nuruddin Abakari, said, given their mother's contribution to her people, they were not surprised, adding that the title is well deserved. Uh, on it, on her behalf, thrilled, very excited, and we feel very blessed. And it was very well deserved. Um, I feel very honored and humbled by her and very happy for her. That's what I she does. The public and the people is now rewarded. A reception and cultural night was held as part of the ceremony where traditional singers added color to the event. And congratulations to the first uh, Gimbia of Jamare in uh, Bochi. Now, please don't go away. Let's pay some commercial bets and when we come back. All right, thanks for staying tuned and we move on to other interesting stories now. And when they prayed for the rains to stabilize, the focus of their hopes was more good cultivation, bumper harvest, and better life afterwards. But in a twist of fate, prolonged rainstorms were experienced, which defied for many the hope of a bumper harvest, but instead delivered harvest of deaths injuries and devastations. This is the unfortunate fate that befell a number of agrarian communities in Kano State, as here reported by correspondent Elizabeth Yila. <laughs> This is a viral video showing the main road that leads to the new site of Bayere University Kano, immersed in water after a downpour causing traffic gridlock. Most areas in the state experienced such heavy rains, as predicted by the Nigerian Meteorological Agency, NIMET, in its seasonal climate prediction of rainfall. To ascertain the level of damages caused by the rains this year, NTA crew embarked on a fact-finding mission to Lambert, the local government area and its surrounding villages, reported to have nearly 2,000 cases. In Lambert, the West, nearly 80 houses were destroyed by the heavy rain. It was the same situation at Angorzamia in Ajumao area. There we met Hassan Abdullahi, a farmer whose entire house got leveled to the ground by the rainstorm. We continued our journey to the remote villages of Gwanda and Bukawa. It was indeed a bumpy ride, as the road leading to these communities is in dire need of attention. Most of the houses visited at Gwanda that were affected by the rainstorm have already been molded back, but it was a different scenario on arrival at Angwarbay, Dukawa. There we met Baba Daihiru Haruna, a 90-year-old man whose house collapsed on his wife of more than 60 years of marriage, leading to her death. 70-year-old Adam Musa also has a story to tell. His house collapsed on him, his pregnant wife, and two daughters. Malam Adamo and his daughters also sustained leg fractures, while his pregnant wife, who has long passed her due delivery date and in her 10th month of pregnancy, sustained a spinal cord injury. They now live with the wife's mom in a two-room mud house. Since it happened, my wife cannot stand. One of my daughter only grows while I have been in this room for the past 22 days. I can only stand when my mother helps me. She takes me everywhere I go. My leg is also swollen. It was dusk when we finally left the village. These are just a few out of the numerous cases reported to the Kano State Emergency Management Agency. A rough estimate of what we have so far recorded as flood victims is 7,797. This is as of one to two weeks ago. Not to talk of from one week down to, to today as I'm talking to you. The likes of Baba Dahiru has lost a companion, a partner and a friend. 
while nature runs its course. One can only hope that the family of Malam Adamomosa get the help they so desperately need to recuperate and take charge of their lives once again. Quite unfortunate there. Now, dogged, upright, courageous, mobilizer, advocate of justice and human rights were the words used to describe the late the law Baron Ugo Niyami Jogu during her funeral service in Jaws. Bill Kitson who reports that the service attracted top government functionaries, traditional rebels and political associates who paid glowing tributes to the deceased. The last journey of Ungona Oni Jugu was carnival-like, being a title holder in the Omlan and a matron of the girls' brigade. Family, friends and mourners from within and outside Joss pay their last respect to the woman they described as great at the Equa Unity Church Rayfield Joss. <laughs> A sign titled Coming Judgment, Reverend Ayuba Ashishe, who read from Revelations chapter 20, verse 11, admonished Christians to live a life worthy of their calling, as only those who do good will enter his kingdom. <laughs> Chief Mona, Governor Simon Lalong, and other dignitaries extol the virtues of Ungona Omi, saying she will be greatly missed. They pray God to grant her soul perfect rest and comfort the family she left behind. For her immense contribution to God's service, the deceased was honored with the posthumous award of the church. Her body was then lowered at her family compound in Rayfield. Preceding the funeral, a service of songs held in her honor as senior pastor Equa Unity Church Reverend Shirley Usman Yusuf charged the congregation to always be ready to meet their maker at all times. Born on the 1st of October 1940, late Ungona Oni Jugu passed on at the age of 82 and survived by six children. <laughs> And similarly, the Ashanyi Royal Family regrets to announce the transition of the Ashanyi of Ishanyi Oba, Dr. Abdul Ghani Salahuddin Adikindi Ologwebi Ajinese I. A statement signed by the Secretary to the Ashanyi Royal Family, Prince Femi Olalori. The Ashanyi passed in the wee hours of Sunday, the 24th of July 2022, after a protracted illness. Oba Adekunde, aged 62, spent 15 years on the throne and will be buried on Monday, July the 25th, 2022. The entire Shane Royal family appreciates the executive, gov gov executive governor for the support given to the Royal House at during the illness of the late monarch and praise God Almighty to continue to bless them. And that's Newsline tonight. We want to thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to always join us in our campaign against rape and rapists. From me and the entire crew from Lagos and here in Abuja, to have a pleasant good night. Just. <laughs>